Hi, welcome to my kitchen chemistry lab where today we are going to do an experiment out of my full year long lab book called freezing point depression. Well, truthfully, we're going to make some ice cream with science. The science of this is that inside this bag will be the salt and ice. The ice has a freezing point of zero degrees Celsius, but adding the salt is going to drop the freezing point. So this um, milk mixture is going to be offloading its heat onto the ice. And because that ice now has a lower freezing point, it is going to melt it pretty quickly, that ice. Um, so the milk will freeze faster. During that time, we're gonna shake this like crazy because we don't want a milk popsicle, we want ice cream, which has lots of air bubbles in it. And that's what helps to make it smooth. So the shaking is going to help quite a bit. Now the recipe for the ice cream, if you want to make vanilla ice cream, regardless, you're gonna need whole milk. Uh, for vanilla ice cream, we are going to use one cup of milk and about a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract with maybe a quarter cup, an eighth of a cup of sugar. You should probably start small and then add in, just like give it a little taste beforehand. Um, and if you were interested in chocolate ice cream, I don't recommend using cocoa powder in sugar, but instead I recommend Nesquik powder. I know it sounds crazy, but it actually comes out really, really great. So that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's get into it. I'm gonna cut my recipe in half just because I don't wanna make that much ice cream. It is a cold February day. Um, so again, I'm cutting in half. My recipe that I have goes for a whole cup of milk. Half a cup will work just fine. It's gonna turn into the exact same amount of ice cream. Um, so a half cup to me seems just fine. So that's just gonna go into the Ziploc bag. It's important not to set this down on the table because it will spill. <laughs> um, I have done this for years with my students in my own classroom and it is the most fun day of the entire school year. I live for it. Um, okay, so the full recipe calls for a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Cutting this in half would be an eighth teaspoon. Um, I don't have an eighth teaspoon measuring spoon, so we're just gonna go with the whole quarter teaspoon as far as I'm concerned. Um, vanilla is a fantastic flavor, so I'm not upset about that. You can also like shake it up and do mint extract if you wanted to try mint chocolate chip. You can crunch up Oreos and make yourself a cookies and cream, a mint cookies and cream. The full recipe calls for a quarter cup of sugar. I think that's actually quite a bit. This is my eighth measuring cup. I'm not even gonna fill this all the way because I know that this is very sweet. Um, so I don't know if you can tell. Uh, maybe like two thirds filled on this. So I'm just gonna pour that in like this. And I am going to kind of give this a shake. I'm actually gonna give this to my dog. Um, <laughs> we'll keep it in the freezer. He does this like after he gets a bath because he really doesn't like it. Um, after going to the vet. So you just gotta give this a stir, rather a shake. You can see there's already lots of air bubbles in here. That's great for making ice cream. I have my gallon bag full of ice. These are really big ice cubes. <laughs> um, I made these in an ice cube tray. And now I'm gonna add, well actually let me add this first. Um, so I'm gonna try to like tuck this in between the ice cubes a little bit. Okay, I've done my best. I'm actually gonna open up the inner bag and kind of squeeze out a little bit of the air. There's a lot of bubbles in there, so that's kind of tough. Okay, make sure there's a really good seal because otherwise you'll have salty ice cream, which is not ideal. Next, we're gonna take salt and pour a very generous amount in here. Um, I typically tell my students to count to three and then keep going. <laughs> it works best with the big chunks of um, like kosher salt or not rock salt. It has to be something that's food safe just in case it gets into your ice cream. Um, but I'm just using regular like cheapy store brand salt. So now I'm gonna zip this shut. Try to squeeze out some air. 
and shake this for 10 to 15 minutes. It's going to get very cold. So like when I'm doing this with my students, I actually tell them to bring like a towel or an extra t-shirt or maybe even gloves because it's winter time um, to hold the bag because it gets freezing cold. It will hurt your hands after some amount of time. I'm going to wrap my bag in a dish towel. Okay, we're a few minutes in. <laughs> I got my sleeves up. Um, it's important to notice how quickly this is melting. We have a lot of liquid in here. And now this milk is already like kind of frozen. Now I would say on average, this takes like 10 to 15 minutes. Some kids who aren't as generous with the salt, it takes them up to 20 minutes. It is not necessarily an easy way to get ice cream but it is quite delicious. So I have always said you just go until the texture is right. I mean, it's milk, it's food safe from the beginning. Um, so it's done when you are ready to eat it. If you're a teacher and you're planning this for your classroom, one thing I recommend is for that um, students to have their own ice cream bag, but two kids per ice bag. Number one, it cuts down on the number of gallon bags that you need. It'll also um, cut down on the amount of ice and salt that you need, but kids are known for complaining, of course, um, especially my teenagers in chemistry classes. So if they can take turns shaking the bag of ice because it is very cold, um, that would be helpful. I would just have them label whose bag is whose this way if any kid is double dipping on the taste test that we're not swapping germs. Additionally, what I like to do is collect as many gallon and sandwich bags as I can. A lot of the time I offer extra credit for any kid who's willing to bring them in. We have them bring in toppings. I typically supply the milk, but you can consider talking to your cafeteria or to your principal about financing it. Um, it is a big crazy lab for a hundred kids and it makes a huge mess. So make sure to let your custodians know what's up and what's going on. I will say one year I had, um, we filled like five garbage bags of bowls and spoons and bags and um, candy boxes and all that kind of stuff. And my room was an absolute disaster. There were puddles everywhere. I had my students remove all of my furniture. We had mobile lab tables and chairs. I had the kids move everything out. This way my custodian could really easily get in and mop the floor. I also let them know ahead of time what was coming. This way they <laughs> they could easily anticipate what was gonna happen. Um, unfortunately for them, it happened on a Friday. I left my custodian a gift as a thank you for treating us so well and for letting us make a gigantic mess. I would guess that this round, it took me about seven minutes to get the ice cream consistency that I wanted. But remember, I cut my recipe in half compared to what I recommend in the lab book. So that's about right. Um, this is my ice cream. It's kind of flat right now, but you can see that it is frozen. I like the consistency of this right now. It's a little bit like a soft serve. So let's taste test it. Okay, this is my ice cream. It looks a little bit like mashed potatoes, but I promise it's ice cream. Let's see. Mmm, that is delicious. You can decorate this with all kinds of toppings, with sprinkles, chocolate syrup, whipped cream, anything you would put on a normal ice cream. This is outstanding. Let's find out if this is dog approved. Whoa, was it delicious? Looks like it. <laughs> What a good boy. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen for our chemistry experiment. If you need any materials or need the lab experiment, please look in the video description because I'll have some links down there for you. Um, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the lessons that we use to feel confident in what we're learning here. And I'll see you next time. Bye.